and Savior Jesus Christ on this wonderful Easter Sunday morning. And we're glad that you've uh, tuned in. We're singing uh, page 533. We've got a few people here this morning that will help us out. And then uh, you can help us there uh, in your home. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. I'm so glad uh, this morning that we can celebrate a living Lord. We're not here mourning a dead corpse today. We're, uh, uh, we're edifying, we're, we are exalting and magnifying a living Lord today. Jesus is alive. 533. <laughs> within your heart there today. This is a totally different venue uh, this morning on this Easter Sunday. Usually we have a pretty good crowd here on Easter Sunday, uh, but uh, because of, uh, of the limitations and uh, uh, things that are going on in our country and uh, the coronavirus, uh, we uh, have to come to you through the means of the Internet. And, uh, but we want to try to change that next Sunday. And we're going to try to have our service here for those of you that can come. And we'll uh, abide by the rules, uh, by our distances, uh, six feet apart, uh, no handshaking, no hugging. Just uh, you can wave at one another. Amen. So next Sunday at 11 o'clock, if you'd like to meet here in the auditorium, we'll have a service. I feel like we need to get our people back and uh, get the sheep back in the pasture here and uh, to worship the Lord. And uh, so we'll, we'll be careful about it, And but if you have reservations about it, you can still watch it uh, there on the Internet next Sunday. But next Sunday at 11 o'clock here at New Beginning Baptist Fellowship here in the auditorium. So remember that, if you would, please, and come out, and we'll uh, worship the Lord together next Sunday. We're going to have prayer this morning. Then we'll have a special announcement by... Brother Oscar uh, today, and, uh, and then we'll uh, have a song by Miss Debbie Wise, and uh, then we'll go into the mess. Uh, we'll have uh, another song by Miss Debbie Kelly. Amen. We got a lot of good singing today. Praise God. Debbie's, this church is full of Debbie's and Mary's and Betty's and whatever. But we're, we're glad that you've tuned in today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that on this day we can worship a risen Savior, a glorified Lord. And, Lord, you ever live to make intercession for us today. And we're glad that we serve a living Savior. I pray for our people today, especially for the sick, those, uh, Lord, uh, that are uh, recuperating from sicknesses, 
their hospital stays, those in the nursing homes. We pray especially for those, Lord, who have been affected by this whole uh, virus. And Lord, many today have lost their loved ones because of this. And many today are sick because of this. We pray your healing touch would be upon people, and especially our people. Lord, we're glad that you're still the great physician. You're able to heal and, and to restore. And uh, we do pray for people today that need thy divine touch. And I pray for this service today that we'll worship you this morning here in this auditorium and lift up the precious name of Jesus in song and in sermon. Bless now uh, this service, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Oscar, you come right along and give us announcements in regard to um, our mortgage on our church and what God has, is doing uh, in that realm. Good morning. Happy Easter to all of you. The good Lord, because he's risen, we have something to look forward to in the future, and we, we love him and we thank him for all that. This morning, I'd like to say that I'd been asked about how much money we still owe on our business loan, building loan, and it's uh, $85,264.58. So we want to thank the Lord for all the people that brings in the tithes to the storehouse and follow God's order and we just thank you for that and in the future this building will be paid off and that will be a blessing to all of us. Thank you very much. Amen. Well praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well God's good. He's faithful and uh, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to his mighty power which worketh in us. And you know what that power is, my friend? That's resurrection power. And uh, that's uh, that we need that resurrection power today. Miss Debbie, you come along and sing for us. And uh, you listen to the words of this song. It had been three days, his parents could not find him. The scribes and the Pharisees were all gathered round him. As a boy in the temple, speaking with such wisdom, they were all amazed at what he said. Spoke of one who was to come, baptizing with fire. When John baptized him, the heavens were open, and God descended like a dove in the middle of it all. There was authority straight from the father no one could explain away his power the love it all there was Jesus on a hill just outside of town a man hung there blue the souls of men to captive freedom. Three days later. 
Praise God, Jesus is right in the midst, and I'm thankful for that today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Miss Debbie. We'll have another song here in just a few moments, but let me remind you that uh, it, during these days that uh, I'm thankful for those who are uh, faithful in their stewardship and their giving. And if you'd like to send your offering or your tithe to the church, uh, you can uh, send it to New Beginning Baptist Fellowship, P.O. Box 1524, Palaka, Florida, 32178. So remember that. If you'd like for information regarding the church and regarding the services, you can call here the church uh, office at uh, 386-643-7445, and uh, we'll uh, give you the information that you need. And so remember that, if you would. We appreciate God's faithfulness to us uh, and to his church. You know, Paul said in Philippians 419 to the church at Philippi, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, that was a promise given to a church, and we've already uh, witnessed the, the fact how God uh, has been faithful to our church in helping to pay off the indebtedness, and uh, we're going to see that paid off, praise God, pretty soon. And so we, we claim Philippians 4.19. Also, uh, there are many of you that are, are, are listening and watching uh, out of state, and we uh, have heard uh, this past week many that have uh, watched in, uh, up in Virginia and uh, North Carolina and around and about. In fact, we had some to watch from Indiana. Uh, some, of our, some of our good friends uh, around uh, the states have tuned in and got wind uh, that we were having uh, this uh, service, and so they've been listening in. And we're glad that you've uh, decided to listen. We pray that uh, this service will be a blessing to you. Now, Miss Debbie Kelly is going to come and bless us with a song right before the message from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amongst all this bad news, we have great news. He is risen. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is risen. And uh, I said a moment ago, we're not here to mourn a dead corpse. Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's no longer in that borrowed tomb. Praise God. The tomb is empty. We're here uh, lifting up, magnifying a living Lord. Jesus Christ is alive. Thank you, Miss Debbie. And uh, by the way, we appreciate Miss Debbie decorating the church, these beautiful flowers. Uh, and uh, I, you probably could see on the walls here how she's decorated and uh, uh, sort of looks a little Easter. Amen. Not lilies. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the lily of the valley. Take your copy of God's Word. We've been in 1 Corinthians 15. We've been preaching on the gospel of the resurrection. The gospel of the resurrection. The word gospel, of course, means good news. I'm glad we have good news today to bring to you. Uh, you've heard a lot of bad news recently, but it takes the bad news to make the good news good news. And certainly when we read the word of God, we find bad news, that we're sinners, that we're lost, we're in need of a Savior. Uh, and Jesus Christ came into this world to be just that. He came to die on the cross. That's what Paul is dealing with in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is a very important chapter because uh, the church at Corinth was, uh, had deviated from the doctrine of the resurrection. And of course they were denying the resurrection uh, in the last day. They were denying any type of resurrection. And Paul was saying, listen, if, if you say that there's no resurrection, here's what you're saying. You're saying that Christ did not come out of the tomb on the third day. And he says that in verse 12 of our text in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, now if Christ be preached that he arose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now I want to just, uh, uh, just emphasize that today in this message what are the ramifications if Jesus is still in that tomb today? 
if he's still in that mummified uh, situation, if his bones are still there in that tomb, uh, what ramifications, what would be true today if Christ was still in the grave? We don't preach that. We preach that he's alive. We preach that uh, the tomb is empty. And uh, thank God he came out the third day. But suppose Christ uh, is still in that grave. Suppose he's there just like Confucius is and Muhammad and Buddha and all the other leaders of the world religions are there as they are laid in a certain tomb somewhere. Their dust-laden bones are in that tomb. Uh, what ramifications would that be? Paul gives us a series of ifs in this uh, chapter that would be true if uh, Jesus Christ uh, is still in the grave. Now, first of all, there's some personal implications. Secondly, there's some historical implications as well. First of all, if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, it has something uh, to say to us. It has personal implications for us. So beginning in verse number 12, as I just read a moment ago, through down verse number 19, Paul gives us a series of ifs to show us the personal implications that we must face if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead. The first one being is my preaching is profitless. If Jesus Christ, my friend, is still in the grave, what I'm doing today is futile. What I'm doing today is in vain. Uh, Paul says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. It is foolishness. Oh, what I'm doing today is foolish to the, to the average natural man who is a void of the Spirit of God. And, uh, but it's foolishness. But unto us who are saved, Paul says, it is the power of God. Paul says, God, it has pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. By the way, the word foolishness, I'm told, comes from the Greek word which means moronic. It's, it's moronic. The world sees preaching as moronic. Well, what I've been doing for the past 48 years has been moronic if Jesus Christ is still in that tomb. But I'm thankful today that my preaching is not profitless, that my preaching is really not in vain. The Bible says the word of God shall not return unto me void. Whenever the word of God is preached, whenever the gospel is preached, in its simplicity and in its power, uh, God can do a transforming work in your heart and in mine. And we see the transformations in the lives of these uh, uh, apostles who saw Jesus uh, as he came out of the grave. He appeared to 500 brethren at one time. He appeared to Cephas, uh, that is Simon Peter. And at last he appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus who would be saved and become the mighty apostle Paul. What a transformation it is that the gospel of the resurrection uh, pr procures in our life. So he says here in this uh, verse 14, if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. It is empty. We might as well close the book, go home, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. But I'm going to tell you, what I'm doing today is not futile. My preaching is not profitless. There's people that will listen to the preaching of the Word of God, and people still do. Amen. People still do. And uh, they believe it, and they appropriate the gospel to their lives, and they're gloriously saved. So I'm glad, thank God, we can still preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as Paul outlined here in the first uh, three verses of 1 Corinthians 15. That is the gospel. It is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But if Christ is in the grave, my preaching is profitless. But number two, my faith is futile. My faith is futile if Christ is still in the grave. Now he says it also in verse 14, my faith is also vain. It is empty because my faith uh, is, in, uh, is in other things. My faith is in a dead Savior. My faith is in a dead creed. My faith is in a dead religion, not a living Lord. But I submit to you today that my faith, my belief is in Jesus Christ in a living Savior. The Bible says in Romans 4.25 uh, that he was delivered for our 
transgressions, but raised for my justification. My justification. I'm justified today just as if I had never sinned. Jesus Christ came out of that grave. God was saying amen to the death of Jesus on the third day. And so I'm glad my faith is not futile. We need to have faith in God and his faith in Jesus Christ that saves us. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not your faith that saves you. It's Christ that saves you. But it's your faith that appropriates what he did for you 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Not by works uh, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saves us. And so it's our faith, our belief in Christ. But it would be useless today, beloved, if Christ would still be in the grave. So my preaching would be profitless. My faith would be futile. And then thirdly, sin would be sovereign. You think about it. Sin would have won the day if Jesus Christ uh, is still in the grave. We would all be mastered by sin today if Jesus Christ is still in the grave. We'd all be dragged to hell today uh, when we die if Jesus Christ is still in the grave. Now he says also in verse 17, if Christ be not raised... Ye are yet in your sins. You think about that. You're yet in your sins. No hope uh, in this life. No hope in the life to come. You're yet in your sins. So it's awful to consider today that we might still be under the burden and the weight and the condemnation of sin. But I'm glad today I'm not under the burden and the weight and the condemnation of sin because three days, uh, thank God, later, Jesus Christ came forth. You remember what Jesus said in John 8, 21? He said, ye shall die in your sins. Ye shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. Oh, we must believe that he's the son of God. We must believe that he's the Christ of glory. We must believe that he came and died for us and took our place of vicarious death, a vicious death, but thank God a victorious death on the cross. You see, sin, someone says, is like a chain which binds us and uh, it blindfolds us. It's a poison which defiles us and a slave master who enslaves us. You think about it. That's the way sin is. If Jesus Christ is not alive, then the burden of sin still lies heavenly, heavenly on us today. It's a burden that God never meant for you to bear. So you take your burdens to the Lord and you leave them there, praise God. On Jesus was laid the sins of the world. So my preaching is profitless if he's still in the grave. My faith is futile. Sin is sovereign. And then thirdly, uh, fourthly, excuse me, there, my testimony to others would be false. My testimony to others would be false. In other words, uh, my witness would be worthless. My witness would be worthless. Why go out and witness and tell others about a, a, a Savior if he's still dead. Oh, that's not good news. That's not good news to anybody. And so Paul raises a fourth implication here uh, of the theory that Jesus is not alive. In verse 15, he says, We're found false witnesses of God because we have testified that he raised up Christ. If Jesus Christ is still in that tomb, then the disciples and the apostles who encircled the globe went to all the world to preach the gospel are deceivers. They've deceived not only themselves, but they deceived others. And those of us who have been preaching the word down through the years, uh, we have deceived others as well if Jesus Christ is not alive today. Every Christian who has a testimony of their faith in Jesus Christ is a false witness. You might as well not go out and try to be a witness uh, if Jesus Christ is not alive. And so uh, our witnesses, our witness would be worthless. The disciples would be liars. And then uh, th uh, the fifth thing, if Jesus Christ is still in the grave, you think about this. And here, this is a serious consequence. Jesus himself would be a liar. Jesus himself would be a liar. If Jesus did not come back from the dead according to the scripture, then uh, what he said about himself, you destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He wasn't talking about the earthly temple. He was talking about the temple of his body. Three days he would come out of that grave. Listen, he says, if you put me to death, I'm going to come back from the dead, praise God. I'm going to come back alive, glorified out of that tomb. But you think about it. 
If Christ is still in that tomb today, yonder there in Jerusalem, my friend, Jesus was, is a liar. Uh, Josh McDowell wrote a little paperback book years ago uh, entitled More Than a Carpenter. And uh, it's a good little book that I recommend everybody to, uh, to read. And he said Jesus was either a lunatic, either a liar, or he's Lord. Amen. He's either a lunatic, a liar, or he's Lord. He's a, either a lunatic, he was crazy, and he was deceived about it, or he was a liar, he knew that he was lying, or he's Lord. He's all that he's ever said that he was, was to be. And, but I, I'm glad that the outcome is that he is Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. And one day, ladies and gentlemen, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in heaven above, on earth beneath, and hell below. Everybody will bow that knee, even the old devil that will bow the old thorny, sin-cursed knee and confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And then let me say, Another thing, if Christ is uh, still in that grave, our future is fearful. Our future is fearful. Boy, I tell you, I don't see how unsaved people live today. I'd, I'd already uh, died of he headline hysteria. <laughs> I mean, reading the newspapers and watching the news, uh, I would already jumped off the bridge somewhere, you know, and just ended it all because there's no future. There's no future without Jesus. There's no future without a biblical Worldview. We know how this thing's going to end because we, hey, praise God, we've let, read the last chapter of the Word of God. Amen. And we know what the Bible says. King Jesus is coming back one of these days in great power and in great glory, and he's going to establish his kingdom. Praise God, I know how it's going to end. You know, you used to read them little uh, stories, you know, in your books, and you, you, you would read where the villain had the... Uh, your hero over a cliff and about ready to throw him over a cliff. He said, oh, no, my, my hero's going to die. Oh, he's, or, or he's, he's tied him to, a, uh, to the railroad. And here comes the train. Oh, no, who's going to rescue my hero? But then you flip over and say, well, how's this, how, how's this end? <laughs> and then you turn over the, the end of that book and you see your hero riding off into the sunset on his white horse with his sweetheart. Amen. Uh, so your, your, your hero is saved, amen. Your hero is not defeated, praise God. He's like Hopalong Cassidy. He rides off into the sunset, praise God. And that's the way it is with this book here. Praise God, I can look in the back of the book like the old fellow said at the barbershop. I know how it's all going to end. Jesus is going to win, amen. Jesus is going to win. And folks, he is going to win, praise God. He's winning today. You may not understand it, realize it. But listen, Paul says in verse 18 and verse 19 of this chapter, uh, he says, uh, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Oh, you think about it. That trip that you made there to the cemetery, you laid your, your loved one uh, six feet under the sod, and uh, then you'd have to say, Oh, my, they're, they're gone. I'll never see them again. I've had people say that at funerals. I'll never see them again. Well, uh, Friend, listen, if you're saved and they're saved, you will see them again. But listen, if Christ is in that tomb, you will never see them again because uh, the future is awful fearful without Jesus. He says, if, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're all men most miserable. Thank God I have hope in Christ. But if it's in this life only, I'm miserable today because I have hope beyond the grave. I've got that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of my great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul says, your, your future is fearful. A preacher friend of mine said many years ago, after the death of his son, tragically, he said, uh, an, an old preacher put his arm around me and, and uh, said, uh, listen, you've been preaching that God is, is faithful and Christ is able for all these years and uh, you need to believe that. And he said, I had to... I had the choice of even being bitter or better because of my son's passing. But she said, you know, because Jesus Christ is alive, because he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, I have hope that I'm going to see my son one of these days again. And I'm going to tell you, my friend, uh, listen, one day the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes, they will. They'll rise first. Why? Because you read on in this chapter, and we'll get to it. 
He's the first fruits of those asleep. He's the first fruits. That means there's a lot more coming after him. Amen. <laughs> He's the first fruits. And uh, uh, the Bible says he will descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive shall be caught up together to meet him in the Lord. Now, that's the rapture. That's the, the, it could happen any moment, and that could happen today. That could happen tonight. I hope you're ready today. What are the ramifications? My preaching would be profitless. My faith would be futile. My sin would be sovereign. Witnesses would be worthless. Jesus Christ would be a liar. And, of course, the future is fearful. Death would win out in the end. If Christ, if Christ. But listen, folks, I'm glad I, I don't have to end there, and, and I'm not going to get into this right now. Well, I should because this is Easter, isn't it? I should get into it, but let me just read this verse of Scripture. But now is Christ risen <laughs> from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Boy, that's a change, isn't it? But now, right now, right now, I'm glad I'm a child of God now. I'm glad I have a present tense Savior now. I have a present tense of the Lord now who said, I'm the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? Yes, I do believe that you are Jesus, the resurrection and the life. I have life now. I have eternal life now. I don't have to wait till I die to get it. I have it right now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. I'm glad, praise God, we shall be like him because we are a child of God today. But now, right now, folks, we have a now salvation. We have a no-so salvation. And I hope you know him today. I hope you put your faith and trust on this Easter Sunday in the Christ, the glorified Christ who came out of the grave uh, three days later. He's alive. He's alive. And he's coming back again one of these days. We're going to bow our heads and hearts, and we're going to pray. And then... Uh, Miss Debbie will play Amazing Grace or something on the piano and close out this day. And uh, remember next Sunday now, 11 o'clock, a uh, different type of venue. We invite you to come back and those of you that can and uh, be careful and uh, come back and we'll worship the Lord together next Sunday at 11. Remember that if you would please. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you again for your love. Thank you for uh, the word of God. Bless now this message to our uh, hearers. I pray that they will appropriate the message. And those that need to be saved, they'll look to the, to the ascended Lord, to the glorified Christ, and receive him today as Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.